Okay, so we're back. Um, my great Australian internet disconnected on me, so... We were offline for a bit, but we're back. So, let's try and open up this safe, shall we? I didn't want to end it there, abruptly like that. So, we'll open up this safe. Maybe do a few more things and then I'll end the stream. Okay. So it was 729 or 725. It was either one of those. Let's try it with the B for Bertrand. Let's try that. So, we'll... 7... Two, nine. No. Seven two five was it? No. Hmm. What was the number he gave me? Let me have a look. Ah, uh, it was 739. Okay, let's open it up. Hopefully the B is... Oh yeah, we got it. What's this? Compromising file. William Hamilton is a crook. He's been blackmailing everyone in the village, myself included. Like the infamous Seraphin Podrier. Uh, and this document is proof of every bribe paid by Hamilton to the federal authorities in regard to the acquisition of this damn mine. The fact that he used his henchmen to instill terror within the village will not sway the tribunals down in Montreal. The fact that he's been bribing the government officials um, surely will. I can already picture, picture it making the front page. The English are all the same. We will prevail written with different ink. Hamilton is not only a crook, but a murderer. I do not believe in his remorse. I firmly believe he will pay for his crime. I do not believe in native magic, but I do believe in their vengeance. Ooh. Yeesh. Okay. I didn't even do anything. Okay, so where does that leave us? Strange vision, I haven't got any of the answers. Puzzling, my investigator mind keeps focusing on... Ah, it was in the journal. What's that about? General store. So, manager's wife to sell. Sean's frozen. The freezer is behind all this. For what it's worth, vision told me things that weren't going so well between all the chances. They were hiding many things from each other. Deep, deep down, the woman's diary speaks volumes on that. She even reveals secrets of her husband's safe. Many screams and secrets behind them. Hamilton's murder. Okay. Envelope. What do you trace the events? I guess all we can do is check out another one of the house then.
go to these two houses, I think. And then we'll head up towards... We'll just check, we'll just see what we can find. Check all the places. back to the road, I hope so. Yeah, it does. Right. Let's go back again. Yeah, next house. Uh, this is the one we stopped at at the start, Roy's house. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, I got a dog. Oh, from Jan Roy. We fled. It was getting too dangerous. More people live in North Manistan. It'll be safer there. It was a classic Canadian house, except for the absent horde of kids that would normally be swarming about. Mm. Let's find a log. Do they have any here? Yep, yeah, right here. Another novel page. Monopoly, you win if you pass go. Take a couple of ciggies. Painkillers. The couple radiated something akin to lightheartedness, to freedom. Perhaps some people out there truly found a way to live happily ever after. A picture of Wilfred in his youth. Carl figured right away that the man must have been some kind of wildlife officer. Okay. something in this novel. Something to must have something to there. He's outside. Okay. The photograph was snapped not too far from here, Carl noticed. 
The couple seem to be very good friends. The couples? Okay. So who's the other couple? Must be the house just to the north of here then. Let's go. Driveway coming up. Okay. Hey, I should check these mailboxes. Just quietly. We got mail. A treasure map. A treasure map. Looks like a kid drew it. That must be up. I think that's on the north side. Aha, here. Okay. Let's suss that out. Can get there? My sweet Marie. Let the treasure hunt begin. I've hidden wonderful little things for you all over the village. Follow my clues. You are holding in your hands the first piece of the map. The hunt begins at my place. If you're so clever, I'm certain you'll find everything. Martin. Oh. Alright, that's interesting. Let's go down here. true Catholic always strives to keep lowly temptations at bay. Obviously, Carl thought, someone in this house wasn't doing a good job at upholding the Holy Bible's teachings. Hmm. Beer, ciggies, and a little cake. know what the key's for.
What was even the point of locking your door? If everyone hid their key in the same place? <laughs> Carl was starting to feel like his investigator life lacked challenge. Well, the house smelled wishing. like incense. The kind that reminds you of the good Lord, of peace. car was parked here. Carl could picture the notary's heavy sedan with a huge back seat large enough to fit the whole family. Okay, guess there's no logs. Never mind. Religion was very influential throughout Quebec many years ago. Indeed, it was surprising that Carl did not come across a single chapel since arriving here. Magnet. Nice, we got a wide magnet. How did they draw the sun? TV's on the other side. Hey, yeah, why is that chair facing that way? It's actually quite bizarre. Matches. What else do we have? The perfect cookie cutter Catholic family, most likely attending church every Sunday. It's a baby's room. The family's mother must have spent her days washing the filth off her kids' diapers. The empty cradle sent an eerie feeling down Carl's spine, as if minutes ago someone just grabbed the baby and made a run for it. Love of religion and ancestors was rooted deep inside the hearts of Canadians of old to which the Bedards appeared to be closely related. Sylvie's diary. August 14th, The Bedards had vacated the premises. Carl gathered they would be of no help. Okay. Jean-Luc never had a knack for mathematics. Try as he might, he'll never realize that he simply cannot be the father of the child I'm bearing. But how can I be sure? Oh, wasn't his kid. I have to keep this a secret, at least until the time is right when it'll be safe. August 16th, Dr. Dupre, Dupre, rather, told me it would start showing soon, that I couldn't keep it hidden forever. Got a muster courage, he said. With his usual condescending tone. Courage to face what's coming, but he doesn't get it. For him, I just had some childish affair. He doesn't realize I brought internal damnation upon myself. Marie is sick and Jean-Luc plunges into despair. I told him nothing about the evil growing inside me. Sometimes I get the feeling you can see right through me. My Marie is suffering and I'm the only one to blame. Oh Lord Almighty, why do children have to pay for their parents' sins? September 24th. Marie has recovered, but there's something really gloomy about her now. She always seems so sad. Maybe she caught a glimpse of what dying is like, and if she's unhappy child now because of me? Oh. What if she's an unhappy child now because of me? 
Jean-Luc truly honoured me two nights ago. If the baby makes it, maybe Dr. Bepre can convince him it was born prematurely. It's my only way up. We're heading to, to um, Lac Saint-Jean tomorrow to visit Jean-Luc's mother. I need to. The situation is untenable now, and we fear the worst. Man, what is happening in this town? Dreamcatchers here? Dreamcatchers originated from First Nations legends. They were used to trap nightmares. Is that the kids' room? Works of art from a future artist. Is there no light switch in here? I don't think there's a light in here. Oh wait. Marie's diary. I have a diary just Shame like Mama. that the family had bailed. Carl would have had a few questions for Jean-Luc, a close friend of Hamilton's. I have a diary just like Mom. I'm like her though, I don't wear a long face when writing. But I do love to write my thoughts, and about Martin most of all. I love talking about him. I think he loves me too, just like in Romeo and Juliet. People don't like it when I see him. Only because he's a blah. Just like in the story, nothing can stand in the way of true love. I lost my appetite, can't sleep anymore. Every waking hour, intense shivers run through my body. Dad's making me say Dr. Bipre. These big hands touching me everywhere, he's foul breath exhaling all over my face. Yuck. I'm not sick, I'm in love. I love Martin so much, there's nothing I like better than thinking about us playing together like we always do. I wonder if he found the key I lost the other day. It was pretty sad when I did. Because it's for Dad's garden shed. And Martin has always been afraid of him. I think Martin's dad is a bit like Dad's god. Key fell in the burrow next to the shed. Poor Martin cried like a baby, but I still love him. Let's see if we can get that key, shall we? Next to the shed, huh? There's a burrow next to the shed. Luckily, I have a magnet on a wire. Where's this bar? Unless it's at his house. It might not be here. Carl wondered how long he would have to endure this skin stinging cold. Just a while longer, Carl. Must be at his place. Carl smiled at the sight of the nicely protected garden. Hopefully, the Bedards had managed to dig every last potato out before the sudden snowfall. Go to the Bly's house then, up north, past the general store, I think. We'll go there next. Ah, uh, nice and warm in here.
Ah. Damn. Next driveway on the right. Hopefully we can get some warmth of this place. That's not a driveway. Oh, the snow's so thick. Left, sorry, not the right. Oh god, I'm gonna hit that wall where it loads. Oof. Okay. This is it. I'm gonna park near the shed. Actually, I have I need car to get warm. Oh, he's freezing. A wintry atmosphere surrounded the house. The soundlessness of the area suggested it was empty. When finding a boot, one wonders what became of the foot. It's creepy. Aha, the burrow. This is it. For each object with the magnet. There's the key. A key? What could it be for? Oh, the garden wonder. shed? Carl couldn't reach it with his arm alone. But he had more than a few tricks oh, off his sleeve logs. to pick it up. Ooh. Flares. Chainsaw doesn't work. Matches. Can't pick up that gas can. Alright, well, that was a nothing. Maybe the lights are on. Are there no logs in here? Oh, come on, man. I've just been moved several times. There's really no logs. Oh, no. Wait! Logs! Oh, I'm gonna take a few. Oh, one, one will do me for now. I just want warmth. Means we can save our game here too. The cold was burning Carl. He would not hold up much longer. Yes. He had to warm himself. I know, I know, mate. I know. Oh, ooh, my coldness was... Very extreme. Okay. Let's take a look around this house. Someone ran out of time packing their luggage. The key. The key which seemed to be meant for a padlock, bore an inscription reading Clutze et Fis. Hmm, a company name. Hmm. Better keep an eye open. Businesses weren't exactly numerous around these parts. Note from Martin. Please excuse my handwriting, I'm in a hurry. I have to leave for North Manistan with Mum and Mrs. Roy. They say it's far too dangerous around here these days. I don't know much about what's going on because mum won't tell me anything in an attempt to reassure me. All I know is she has the exact same expression on her face as when I startle her. Dad and Mr. Roy aren't coming because they've gone to get Mr. Lachance. They're real heroes. My grandmother lives in a very big house in North Amanistan. You'd be very welcome there. I must go now, quite literally. Your friend, Martin. Mm. 
little Martin Blais with a family member. There was some resemblance between them, and Carl took note of the sense of bonding and pride they projected. The picture had been taken inside the house. It was the same wallpaper. Judging by the smiles, nobody suspected the impending misfortunes. The spirograph amused Carl. It was a nice modern toy. Aside from being repetitive by nature and completely useless, still, it found its way into many Quebecois homes. Money in a jar. What a shame. Carl would have loved cookies. P. Blah. Over the last few days, the lack of resources forced the death investigation of Pierre, Pierre Blair to come to a halt. The autopsy of the body conducted over the last few weeks didn't reveal any clue what could have helped the investigators. They refused to comment on what would happen next. This new development is happening in the context of the hypothesis of an accident. That's a mouthful. Which is still, in spite of skepticism expressed by the local population, the ongoing official cause of death provided by the authorities. The incident is said to have occurred in the forest surrounding Lake Atemapec. Pierre Bla was found lifeless two weeks ago near a footpath leading to the soon to be restarted copper mine. Bla, an engineer by training who was working on behalf of a consortium headed by William Hamilton, was reportedly in charge of the development plan surrounding the reopening of the mine. At first, police had disclosed that the body had been desecrated. Today, the official version is that it was partly devoured by beasts, hence the original assumption that a crime had been committed. That's a bit suspicious. open in that weather? Perhaps something had to be watched. The sheets were in such a way that indicated a rude awakening, followed by a hurried escape. What had happened here? Le Monstre. That's creepy. going through the fridge. Far out. That scared the crap out of me. Only the, only the tormented mind smoking bed. That roof is so low to have a bed there. I would never have that there. That's just the, the most awkward spot for a bed. I'd just have it in the middle there, to be honest. Okay. 
Elisa's diary. I fear the worst for Alexandre. He hardly gets any sleep. I thought it was from work, but it seems to be far worse than that. From dusk till dawn he stares into the void, barely speaks to me. His son has asked him to play ball and he didn't say a word. And that way he has to glance at the window. Last night I heard him mumble in his sleep, he's coming, he murmured. I don't know why, but those words left a deep impression on me. He woke up shortly after, covered in sweat. He couldn't remember his dream, obviously. He didn't get back to sleep after that, chain smoking the night away over at the window. He told me to pack my things in the morning. I wonder why. Does he himself know? We're waiting, but for what? I think I feel... dread. leave and come back in, does it save? Saving. Okay, cool. Alright, well, I think I'm going to leave the stream there, guys, but thanks for watching. Um, if you're watching on the VOD, hope to catch you live next time. Um, hmm. Depending on how we go tomorrow, I might be streaming this might be streaming this again tomorrow. We'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Um, otherwise, I'll be back next week for the normal stream. Normal time. 5.45pm Sydney time. Um, again, thanks for watching. And yeah, see you in the next one.